At last, we're on our way to Queenstown, the jewel in New Zealand's tourist crown. Visitors from all over the world flock here by the million. It's an absolute must-see. The first Queenstown was the result of the gold rushes of the 1860s. This Queenstown is the result of another gold rush, the property gold rush of the 1970s, 80s and 90s, which made it a New Zealand boom town. And a boom town where environmental policy was controlled by Warren Cooper, a man who's many times been mayor of Queenstown, who was known to his supporters as Mr Queenstown, and to his Labour critics in Parliament when he was an MP, as the artist formerly known as One Coat Warren, or to his bitter critics, Two Coats Warren. <laughs> he's been mayor for so long that his decisions have been dominant in planning policy, and he's a believer in the free market in planning. The free market which has turned Queenstown into that from a landscape that could have been, if properly managed, very much like that. And the question is, in these Lakeland Wars, was it inevitable? Today, Warren Cooper's building his own business complex, slap bang in the middle of town. The top floor is a luxury penthouse retirement home for him and his wife, Lorraine. So here we are, and you hear the construction noise all around. It's, it's like the empire on which the concrete never sets. And it's creeping up the hill here. I mean, this is going to look at, like an eyesore with all this stuff on it. Well, what's it like in Grimsby? Well, Grimsby's flat. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a matter of human perception, individual idiosyncrasies. This relaxed attitude to planning has earned Cooper a world-class opponent. The previous council started to go to lose all control about what was a desirable development and what was not. And they gave permission and to, and these things are now being built, suburbs around Queenstown, creeping into the Wakatipu Basin. And I believe that to be wrong. This would not be permitted in any other sensible part of the world. If you go to England, for instance, to the, to the Lake Districts, you can't build suburbs in the Lake Districts because it is, a, it is an, a landscape of great importance. You can't build suburbs in the Cotswolds for the same reason. And you shouldn't be able to build suburbs uh, in the Wakatipu Basin for exactly the same reason. What's your message for the protesters? The message is you've got to have balance. And the message is that there will always be development. It won't take place overnight, but there will be a point in time when those people that want to come to Queenstown could be turned off if it becomes garish, noisy, has the wrong sort of environmental quality altogether. And you can only do that because the market finally will say, not a judge in the environment court, not Warren Cooper, not Sam Neill, the market will finally say, as it is in all the resort areas on this planet. When you came in the, in the 50s, there'd be about what, a few hundred people. When I came in the early 60s, there'd be something over a thousand or so. Now there's 12,000. I mean, that's an incredible rate well, of growth, really. Lorraine and I only had five children. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we're not in China. We can't put a cap on that, you see. And uh, it will grow, but it will diminish in its growth as it is turned into an ugly place. And nothing I have done in the 36 years I've been in central or local government has turned this into an uglier place. It is the tongue that turns it into an uglier place. Well, how do you mean? That's a beautiful place. These vociferous arguments that you have to indulge in and the fact that I have always retaliated rather than started an argument. And there's been so many lies told about my incredible strengths, my ability to go in and write out all these resource consents that has now become... A, a bit of a joke, frankly. So you're not Superman? Absolutely not. Not super developer? You can't do it in New Zealand. Me? I'm a bit player. I think what it's going to be like in 50 years. I mean, if you look over there, are you going to see development right up the hill over there? I think you probably will. I think you'll have elegant homes and apartments right along the hillside, but it will be a replacement of one dwelling with three or four on the same site. You will have a higher density. And uh, some of my opponents I'd say, you know, that Sam Neill, he's elitist, you know, he's made, made enough money and it's all right for him, but what about, uh, what about the other people? It's, that's actually, it's, it's not germane to the argument. I might as well say to my chief opponent in this debate, well, you know, you're just a politician, so 
I, I can't you know, necessarily believe anything you're going to say. Well, that doesn't help. It's not helpful. The debate is about um, whether it's good for the landscape or not, whether it's good. I'm, I really want to save that place and central Otago, not because I live there. Obviously, I have a, a stake in the place and it's close to my heart. But I think uh, all the people that live there haven't gone to live there in suburbs. They've, they've gone to live there because it is a special place with unique qualities. If you build over those qualities, those, those things have gone. So you think this development is okay and you're not ruining the place? No, we're not ruining the place at all. We've got some beautiful areas and uh, it will, in my opinion, for the next 20 years, maintain its growth. It will come in torrents where you have to manage it and as soon as it gets quiet again, those that are complaining about growth will be the first to say, the first to say, what's gone wrong? Why don't we get some people coming here? because they like the best, but they worry about the future. You've got to...